So this is Promaxo. My name is Amit Vora. I'm president and CEO of Promaxo. We founded the company about four years ago. What we're trying to do with Promaxo is have an office MR, but more importantly, leverage AI as well as robotics to create a whole ecosystem of managing the patient and the disease. Uh, we've all gone through MRIs. We've known what MRIs can do on the soft tissue side for screening, even diagnosis and treatment guidance. But I don't think there are many people here who enjoy the MRI experience. Uh, I actually asked this question last week in a tech conference, and I said, do you guys enjoy MRIs? And one lady just raised her hand and said she slept through it. So that's the only person I know who enjoys it. But more importantly, there's a lot of cost and infrastructure requirements that come in with an MRI. That's where we are coming in to provide efficiency in the market space by creating an office uh, single-sided MRI configuration. Now, when you see this MR, this is about four feet in height, 30 inches in diameter, 20 inches deep. And that bore in the middle is not to push anything through. That's where our robot comes through. The patient is outside the gantry. That way you could enable single-sided imaging over a focused field of view. The goal here is to bring the MRI closer to the patient and the provider. Now, how do we do this? We have the MR itself. We have an MR-compatible robot. Our field strength is only 70 millitesla, so we can do a lot with this MR. We can bring conventional robotics next to it. We can place it in any 10 by 10 foot office. This is only about 1,000 pounds. You can take, up, take it up an elevator. We don't require any shielding in the room. We've already passed all third party testing and require no RF shielding. Uh, more importantly, it runs off of 230 volts. So there's no real infrastructure requirements. Now, when we looked at the MRI, we didn't want to stop at just the MR. We wanted to create the, radio, you know, the robotic system with it that could allow us to do biopsies as well as someday interventions under live MRI. Uh, we're heavily protected on the IP side, as you can see. We have about 30 patent families on this, over 62 patents, which are issued in US, China, and Europe. And then as we move on, we have to show imaging. So this is an American College of Radiology phantom. So this is the first time that we've used artificial intelligence to denoise the system on the imaging domain side. Now we'll be doing it on the signal domain side as well, and we're using AI on multiple fronts. But what we are able to do here is have a scan with a 0 0.07 Tesla magnet and have comparable imaging resolution to three Tesla or beyond. Now, that's not what will happen on every clinical indication, but we know for sure on certain indications such as urology, as well as some sports medicine indications, we feel pretty good. Now, this has to be a business around it. I mean, we've done a lot of third-party conducted market research around it. We've looked at four different specialities. Our beachhead market is urology. You heard from Randy about all the challenges with fusion and MRI and everything. I launched the first fusion system in the market, so I kind of know what the challenges were. The biggest challenge was there's no real reimbursement course for fusion that complemented uh, ultrasound. But here, with an MRI uh, in an office, you have existing CPT codes that could be leveraged. We've surveyed over 305 physicians in urology, sports medicine, orthopedics, as well as breast oncology, and we've seen an overwhelmingly response to purchase this system if it is available. So we've looked at price sensitivity, willingness to purchase, the workflow, how they'll use it, and overall, we feel like there is a business model around it. And again, we've done a full ROI model for a LUCPA, which is Large Urology Group Practice Association. A lot of these urologists and LUCPAs, a couple of them are investors in us, and they break even in acquiring this system within 10 to 11 months in just doing screening and diagnosis. We're not even talking about treatment here. The team itself has taken seven products in imaging, urology, and oncology to market. So we know this space relatively well over the years. The last, the last company I was in, Eigen, grew to over 300 million in enterprise value when I left, and we launched the first prostate fusion guide biopsy system there. Michael is a former Baxter Pfizer executive, and he's done this a few times as well on the buy side as well as the sell side, transaction side. Uh, Dinesh and Ram go back to me in two other startups as well, and we've done this a few times, so we brought them back in. Uh, we are supported by some of the biggest names in urology and radiation oncology as well as imaging. The top three on the left, Whip Patel, Ash Tiwari, and Neil Shore, are three of the top urologists in the country. Uh, Diego Lego is former strategy innovation officer of Philips Healthcare. He retired about three years ago and joined our startup. Uh, and then we have Robert Waterhouse, who's chief medical officer of uh, United Healthcare in North Carolina. Now, a cool thing about our advisory board is, other than except one, uh, two people out of 14 we have, everybody's a big investor in us. 
And when I'm talking about these clinicians, they haven't come in at 25K, they've come in at significant numbers. Uh, so they truly believe in us from day one, and they like what we're doing. So we've been fortunate enough as well to have some strategics come in pretty early with us. Microport is a China, Hong Kong-based, publicly traded company. We got introduced to them almost three years ago now, and they first invested in us about two and a half years ago. Um, they're big in orthopedics and cardiovascular space, but wanted to get into urology as well. Uh, but you know, the multi-use of our system, even in orthopedics, kind of motivated them. So they came in and they've invested in us. We also work with Robert Bosch Group on the software consultancy side, uh, with Kineticos, Wilson Sonsini, Casey McGlynn on the IP side. And then we are working with some of the biggest names on the low field MRI front, on academic front. We're working with Stanford, with John Pauly's group. We're working with Larry Wald and Matt Rosen with MGH, Harvard and MIT. And then we're working with Wisconsin and Vanderbilt as well in building some of the low field AI stuff. On the financial projection side, we are working with FDA right now. Okay, now I clicked it multiple times, so I'll go back. Uh, so we should be in the US market band of this year. So we're sitting with FDA again to see what indications for use they're willing to give us right now. Uh, and then we expect to do a slow launch in US. We're not looking at selling hundreds of these systems over the next couple of years. The goal is to build the right optimized sequences for us and allow us to bring our robotic platform into the mix by end of next year, early next year or early 2021. And then this is only urology market only in US. So we can explore other markets beyond that. So we feel pretty good with our revenue mix of capital equipment, disposables, as well as our robotic platform. And the disposables include MR compatible biopsy guns and biopsy needles. This is what we have done till now. Uh, you know, by, when we got involved in this company, we already had raised, or the technology had raised a fair bit of money from NIH and NSF. That helped us offset some of the early dilution we would have had. Since then, we've raised slightly over 15 million in three rounds, mostly from super angels, corporate strategics, and smaller funds. Right now, we're doing a 40 million Series B, which is split up in 10 and 30. The 10 million round just got started in early December, and we have term sheet signed with a lead investor, and we've got about 40 to 50% of the round committed. The goal is to close that in the next couple of months, and then move on to our follow-on round, which we plan to close in Q3 uh, of this year. So thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, I should be available later today and in the breakout session as well. Thank you.